Hello fungi friends. I'm going to show you guys what I found out on the Mendocino coast today. So mushroom season here in California has started. We got rain about three weeks ago and that means that all the mushrooms are now out and popping. Uh, I'm going to start out by showing you guys the King Bolete. So this is the classic porcini. Uh, this is Boletus edulis var grand edulis. They are mycorrhizal mushrooms that grow under uh, pine trees. They have distinctive webbing or netting under the on the stipe called reticulation at these beautiful uh, sort of brown caps that age into a little bit more of like a, a penny bun uh, coppery brown kind of color so these are these are great edible mushrooms I really really like them um, very similar to the king boletes our queen boletes uh, boletus uh, regineus is the is the queen and this is mycorrhizal with uh, different hardwoods and so it grows in a slightly different habitat than the king bolete. Uh, so those are sort of the good edible boletes we have. We were out there looking for for kings and queens and you can see quite a bit of a difference here between like a small queen button and a king button uh, but you know there you go. They, they do fruit fairly close to each other especially where I was um, so it's you know helpful to like be able to tell the difference, um, but these are sold in markets both as porcini, so they don't really differentiate that much. I do find the queen to be a little bit softer texture wise, and I actually like the flavor the better of the queen better than the king, but they're both great edible mushrooms. So those are some of the edible bolites I was uh, looking for. I also found a zero camellus bolete. So these have these very angular, interesting looking pores, kind of a cracking top. A um, little bit of cracking texture up there and they actually have um, kind of orangey mycelium around the base and often they have like kind of a bit of a purple shade to them as well. We have two different species of Sewillus. So they just these are what are known as um, slippery jacks. So I think this might be a tomentosis kind. It has this little bit of scabering stuff on the stipe and then there's this um, I think it's Sewillus uh, cerulescens or Sewillus ponderosus. They look very similar. They're kind of yellowy orange and they'll stain a little bit blue or green around the base. Um, and this one's actually a, a decent edible. Uh, you gotta get out past the slime part, but you can cook it down low and slow to kind of mitigate the sliminess of a, of a slippery jack. But these are both edible. They're subpar edibles compared to the king and queen bolites though. Um, we have an edible Amanita. So this is Amanita calyptoderma, uh, which is sometimes known as the Cora. Uh, it's, you know, it's valued a lot by Italians. Um, I think it tastes kind of fishy and I don't particularly love, love the Calyptoderma, um, but it's a very impressive mushroom. They tend to be super solid and they get really big and they're really common all over the California coast this time of year. So it's a good one to recognize. Um, you definitely can eat it if you find a way that to prepare it that you like. Uh, I have just a really massive queen here. This is, you can see lots of reticulation on the stipe here and uh, it makes some really good thumps, thumps and dumps. It's a good, good spanking mushroom. Uh, and then I have some beef steak. So this is Fistulina hepatica. It's a beautiful mushroom that looks like cut beef, um, sort of wet and bloody looking, but it's got little pores um, underneath, almost similar to a bolete. It's actually related to like rustles and boletes. Um, but this is polyporous. It grows inside of trees and uh, oh, it's great. It has sort of a light lemony flavor. Um, I like it uh, battered and fried. It's probably my favorite way to have it, or as a carpaccio, and you cut it really thin and dress it with like olive oil and lemon juice. Um, but it's just a wild looking mushroom. And that cut surface looks kind of like, you know, good dry aged beef or something like that. And lastly, we have our Amanita muscaria. So this is your classic like Mario mushroom. It's got the little, uh, little bits on top. Um, as they grow, the mushroom will grow out of this sort of egg feature and the stipe will elongate and the cap will open up. Um, so the cap can, the, those little bits can wash off. So they're not always the best identifier. You know, you, if you know you have a red cap, you have Amanita muscaria. Um, there's plenty of other Amanitas that look similar, but none of them have this like really distinctive red color, uh, except for one on the East Coast, which is Caesar's Amanita, but that fruits completely different time, completely different season, different biomes. Anyhow, um, I brought home this little egg because I'm going to try time-lapsing it in my new Mela mushroom hood and it should be really cool. So anyhow, I just want to give you guys a quick tour of what I found here on the Mendocino coast and it sounds like my cat is uh, ready for me to go pet her. So 
anyhow, I will leave you guys with that. And uh, feel free to ask me any questions you have about mushroom identification in the comments. I uh, hope to find many more and share them with you. So cheers. Please check out my website, fascinatedbyfunga.com, and, uh, and maybe consider getting some mushroom merch. Anyhow, bye guys.